Hey guys, this is the Visionary. Welcome to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. Click that bell notification. We're going to be posting tutorials every Friday. We're going to be doing a round pitcher pendant today with one millimeter diamonds around the bezel. Um, I made an oval one for a customer last week. And um, I have another customer that actually wants the same style, but their budget is considerably less and they want it more round. So I'm doing one millimeter diamonds instead of the two millimeters to bring down the cost more along the lines of like a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars rather than like a four thousand dollar piece that the, the other customer wants so we're going to make it a little bit smaller but we're still going to give it all the function it will be cast so that we're going to put the pitcher actually on the plate of gold transfer it on with a heat transfer and then seal it with an acrylic dome so it will be waterproof it, he can swim with it no problem um but yeah, let's let's get right into this build. So, let's open up 3D Max. Um, a lot of people use other programs, such as Rhino or Matrix. Um, I am really used to 3D Max. I uh, I went to school for 3D graphics and game development, so. I'm just kind of native to 3D Max and uh, Unity and Mudbox. <clears throat> some people are good with ZBrush. Some people, you know, different 3D programs work differently, right? So this is what I built yesterday and what we're going to be building today. I just wanted to show you. And then the other one that I built, if we import it, Oh wait, this is the wrong way. I have to import and merge From this. Um, it's the oval memorial two millimeter. This one. Open. Let's just see. Merge. Yeah, as you can see, it is quite a bit bigger, right? So let's just uh, start with a new file now. New all. Don't save. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a circle. We're going to go over here to splines. We're going to make a circle. I'm going to click somewhere in the middle here just drag it out and make it about this big i'm going to upload all these files for you that i'm going to import now to make it a little easier so you can follow along all right so one millimeter round prong setting import this will be the stone setting that goes around the bezel. Okay, let's start with that one. We're gonna go into tools. We're going to go down to a line and spacing tool. Um, let's pick the path, like this. And we're just gonna crank up the number until you get the desired effect. We're gonna click on follow here so that they'll all follow the circle instead of being facing the same way. And now, essentially, until they're touching each other. But not overlapping too much. See? Let's just apply that. Now, we can just delete this one. Um, this now, going to modify 
interpolation. I'm going to bring up the steps a bit so it's a little smoother when I extrude it. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just to just to keep it um, like there. So it kind of stays out of these holes. Right? Because these are all the breather holes for the diamonds. You're going to want to keep that intact as much as you can for the model. Go back to perspective. You click P. And now I'm going to extrude. So what we're going to want to do is we go to this modifier list over here and start typing extrude 8x and it should come up and you can just bring up the value just a little bit from zero so that it has some substance and we're going to right click and convert it to an edible poly press w to change to movement r is scale w is movement um, and E is rotate, if you're not familiar with 3D Max. We're just going to bring this up until it like barely is in there. You just want to see like an edge of it almost. Make sure it's thick enough. But it's not thicker than the actual pendant. So we're going to zoom right in. The shortcut keys I'm using to go in between, if you press T is top, L is left, F is front, and P for perspective. And Alt W makes it go to the four view. So then you can click and then Alt W again to go zoom in. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually press shift, hold shift down and drag this up. Oh, wait, no. We'll just go control Z. I'm going to deselect the facet and then shift and drag the whole object. Make a copy of it. Go to the top view again. We'll press T and hit R to bring down the scale. We're just going to make it just slightly smaller than the diamond face, like where the diamond settings end. And then we're going to go to the left view and press W and bring it into this just a little bit. Just a little bit in there. So we're just trying to create a little bit of a lip so that when we set this other piece of gold in there, which I'm actually going to take this and actually just make it a little bit thinner, but still with some substance here so it can still be cast. This is like a half a millimeter. Um, yeah. But what we're going to want to do now, come off of this, select this bottom one, and then we're going to go to the creative tab here, go back to this, and then go down to s compound objects. We're going to want to click on pro boolean because we're going to cut this out. Make sure it says subtraction and then start picking and pick this circle that's right above it. Click off and start picking. We want to turn this back to an edible poly, but as you can see now, it has a lip, right? And then this piece will be the face that we put the picture on, All right? This would be a gold sheet that fits in there. So for now, we're just gonna leave this up, uh, hide selection, so you don't have to worry about that right now. Um, and then we're gonna attach all of these pieces, because we wanna 
print this as one piece. Hold on. Before we do that, let's just select everything. Unselect this. Let's see how many objects. There's always one more when you do this. You'll find it on one of the sides that it started at. It says 69 objects selected, and that's all our diamonds. So there's going to be 68 one millimeter stones in this piece, which is actually m bigger than the one I made last night, but that's okay because you have a little freedom to make it however big you want it, right? So what we're going to do now, go back to here, we're going to attach, I'm going to click on all of these one at a time. Okay, so now that that's done, we found the extra piece. You can kind of see that it looks different. Yeah, we're just going to delete that one. Because now, this is all one object with different elements, right? So if we click element, you can tell each one of these prongs is a separate element. Each one of these is a separate element. This is a separate element. But they are all one object, so they will move now as one. Control Z to go back. So now we are going to import the bail connection. Import. Um, we can do this one too. Import that. That's the bail. That's included in your files. But as you can see, there's a piece missing. So we are going to have to change that. We're going to have to connect some stuff and put some diamonds in it. So we'll do that in a second. File. Import. Import. And then this one. Import that. Okay, this is the connection, like what the bale is actually going to connect to. So we'll find a dead center there and then play with how long it needs to be for this one. And then one more thing, because we're using a different stone setting for the bale this one it's called one millimeter stone setting in the file that i'm gonna send you so what we're going to do pull this over here and just place it there for now what we're going to do is work on this so you want to go to the left view, press L, and kind of move this in the middle of where the stone settings are. And then go to the top view, T. As you can see, it's kind of off-center just a bit. So we want it to go here. Now, we're going to click Vertex, or press 1, and we zoom in. We're just going to drag this straight down. So we want this one only to light up and just drag it straight down. Okay. Now, you can play with this a little bit. And drag it straight down again. So just the y-axis straight down. As long as... Maybe we can change that one just a bit. Uh, 
Okay, so we're gonna click this and just drag this over just a touch, just a touch. And now this will be a little easier to drag up and drag up. And then that will hide it inside the object. Because we're going to make this all one object. This is going to print as one, cast as one piece. And then the bail will cast as a separate piece. Right? Now, I feel like these prongs are just a little bit too high on this file. So what you're going to want to do is click off of this. We're going to attach that one too to this. Okay left now hit one and grab all of these top vertices and now we're just going to drag it on the y-axis straight down just to about there like you see like these are one millimeter stones i made this this particular setting with these prongs for a larger stone that actually needs longer prongs slightly so um this way it'll be a little easier for the guy who's setting them All right now we're gonna want to move this bail so that if you notice like these are this is kind of a floating element and then this kind of goes around this bar right I just kind of move it there for now so this piece is one piece but this will be separate so that it can pry apart I want to be able to like kind of open it at the bottom and put it inside and then it will solder back on so I'm just gonna drag it around in orthographic right now because I feel like there's some geometry that I don't like here a little bit just a little bit it might fix with the pro boolean though once I do that so I'm not gonna worry about that too much let's go back to the left view press L press P and then you can move this over slightly right take this move it down so what we're gonna do we're gonna go top we're gonna make we're gonna grab this all the elements here and just instead of um, copying the object we're gonna copy elements so we're gonna drag this out until they're touching but the prongs aren't touching so clone to element yes okay you see how these are touching but the prongs aren't so that's what we want essentially so let's make it for these high okay I just grab all of them drag it up okay now I just want to fine tweak it just a little bit you, you gotta if you're not gonna do it by math like I did I made all of these with the math already in it so when i make these i have that already kind of calculated in my brain and i'm just working with it as i need to um but if you're not going to do it with math you got to be really careful on like just your distances with stuff making it a little more even that kind of thing am i even going to need to pro boolean this you know, and that's another thing, too, is I don't worry about the geometry as much on pieces that are printing, except that everything has to be closed off completely. 
if you have any open faces any any edges that aren't filled in between it and the 3d geometry when you try to print it it's going to give you an error in the stl file um it's like open space error like it doesn't like that so you just have to make sure that all the elements all the separate elements are closed off so if you're going to make something from scratch as i've done here all of these are from scratch right but this setting i made a cylinder and then i took something that i use and i'll actually i'm going to include this in the in the files too i will include my breather holes so i punch the breather holes through whatever with the pro boolean method the same way that I took the um, this edge down so basically go to top view press T I need to cut it a couple times prong setting is probably the easiest way to set stones and then like you know pave channel set visible set those are a little bit harder um, I try to keep prongs on all of my pieces to keep it simple, but you know, different pieces call for different methods, right? So whatever you feel like it's called for in the piece that you're making, that's what you want to do. So for this, I don't want it to cut this part. So I am going to select the faces below this delete them go to my vertices select all of this and just drag it up to the space in between these things so that it goes all the way through it's not going to cause an error it doesn't touch this so it's not going to cause an error now let's go to the top view again and we're going to do elements again I'm not sure exactly where that one went, so I just control Z and um, clone to the element. These don't have to be exact because I'm just kind of cutting the stuff off of there. that object and that object so that lock came on is because I pressed the space bar by accident if you can't move anything or if you can't click on anything chances are you click the space bar by accident because I uh, I do video editing a lot <laughs> so I'm always pressing the space bar to press play <laughs> it's like a force of habit music everything is like you know spacebar but 3ds max it locks everything so don't do it <laughs> okay so we are going to hide unselected now i'm going to select the face here and say extrude Okay, so this, let's go to the top view. Uh, okay, right there, R. And just make it roughly about the same size. And then we're gonna press one and drag these W over here a little bit. Oh, let's just grab everything. Drag that over there to right there. We'll do this. Top. 
perspective P. Now I'm going back to faces, which is number four. And it'll already be selected. We drag this down a bit. You know what? This is all going to cut out. So we're just going to pull this back, drop it down. All of that is going to cut out and then the other object is going to attach. So it's okay that that gap is there. We will connect this part after. So let's just go over to this tab. We're going to select Pro Boolean again. Make sure this object is still selected. Subtraction. Start picking. We click here. And that is not what I wanted to happen. Okay, so that does need to be connected. It's um, it's causing an error because that's not connected. So let's just off-click this. We're going to convert this to an edible poly. We are going to delete some stuff. Because I feel like there's going to be some errors due to these odd pieces of geometry here so let's just connect it and we'll go hide unselected Z is to zoom in on the point that you've selected. Now we're going to weld these together. Try to eliminate some of this funky geometry here. Z to zoom into it. Zoom back one space. Select them both. Weld it. Make sure nothing else is selected in a weird place because it will try to do something funny. You will notice right away. <laughs> so let's delete this face. Just press delete. Now we're going to select this and we're going to select this edge and click bridge. Yep. And now this one and this one, same thing. Repeat the process on this side. Bridge. We can actually select border, which is number three. Click that and let's press cap. Anything with odd amount of sides, or if you're not sure, just cap it. And then it will seal off the end. So let this go unhide by name. This. Because I. Let's try this again now. So we'll unselect this, we'll go back over to this tab, Pro Boolean, start picking. Boom. And that worked for what we needed it to. It has some weird shading going on, but that's okay. Now let's go unhide all. And now we can turn this back to an edible poly, press attach, and click on these. That's okay. The materials we're not going to worry about just as yet. Let's just bring this part. Oh, we don't want that to be the same object. Okay, so this we can bring down. Almost made that the same object. We just press Control Z and we go back. So let's go to the left view. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're just going to bring this down to where you see the line right there. So 
You can see kind of how the full piece is going to look now. And we can go to the material editor, which is M. Oh, we're in Arnold. Yes, I understand. It's giving me some errors because it doesn't like the materials we're using with this rendering system. So let's change it to a standard surface. Let's give it another standard surface. Okay. Now we're going to go into the second one. If we add anything else, it'll move the material into this first slot. And I don't want to change it again, so I'm just going to use the second one. Go up here. I'm going to make this a little bit of a gold color. A little bit paler, though, because you want it to represent um, like a 14 karat, right? It's not going to be as rich as something that's like 18 or 22 karat. Um... Let me see this. We're going to go to metalness and just crank it up a bit. You can watch it change and crack, crank it up to about 60 and just a little bit of the roughness. You can see the shine changes. I just want to bring this, this specular out a little bit. And that's about it. We can just start, um, assign to selection replace it okay replace that replace that and now you can kind of see what we got also um the rendering setup i'm using is arnold let's just see what it's at let's make this a little bigger for the render Let's go 1920 by 1280, just so it gives it a little extra height. And see what it looks like. Not bad. You see, and you can see, like, this piece is going to be someone's picture, and there will be an acrylic dome over it, which will seal everything in there and uh, make it waterproof for them, everything else. And take a different angle. I think the normals flipped on this thing, which for printing doesn't really matter, but for rendering, it might look a little weird. To show it beforehand, you would need to fix this. But I'm not going to go into that right now. I'm just going to wrap this up. If you want to export it as an STL, you need to do that in object by object, basically. So we're going to deselect this file, export, and you, if you do export selected, which is what you would want to do for a single objects in any other file type, but it actually isn't an option in that. So you have to do this. Go down to STL, Stereolitho, Stereolithograph. As you can see, there's a lot here. Um, now, we are going to call this 8, 1 millimeter round bail so it tells you how many stones one millimeter round and it's a bail if you're doing it specific to the piece you'd want to write the name of the piece or something in the file description so this is going to be so we said there was 68 stones in the bezel so we're going to export this with that in the file title. We're going to go 68 one millimeter round. And the title of the pendant, which is round. Uh, let's not call it round round. Let's go picture. 
independent circle. Save. Okay. Now, this last piece here, you're going to want to save it. as the same type of file and we're going to call this picture picture pendant circle fast either face or facet, like uh, maybe fascia. Yeah, so. We're gonna call this picture pendant circle face. So I understand where it's gonna go with that pendant. And we'll even just put a 68, just to make sure we know which one it is. Um, because my other one has a different diameter, it's gonna go with that one. So it will have a different file title or a different number in the file title. Save that, okay. And there's a final render of the casting um, before it is sent off and actually printed and cast. This is what it will look like when it's done. Okay guys, that was the tutorial and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure you subscribe, click the like button, click the bell notification. I will be posting tutorials every Friday and speed builds in between, so make sure you stay tuned.